morning leaders. We're doing some morning wisdom today. We're looking at Proverbs number two. I'm titling this video, I Will, I Will. And the reason I titled this one, I Will, is because in the very beginning of Proverbs two, it asks you a question. And I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation, but other, other translations, it, it says something like, if you will treasure wisdom, it's a question. Will you treasure wisdom? wisdom. So today I'm, I'm going to read a few verses out of chapter two, and then we'll dive in. I'm going to share some notes that I've got right here. And uh, hey, here it goes. Proverbs 2, wisdom of the day, morning wisdom. My child, will you treasure my wisdom? It is a question. Will you treasure it? Then and only then will you acquire it. And only if you accept my advice and hide it within you, will you succeed. So train your heart to listen when I speak, and we're going to come to that here in a little bit, and open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. Then pass it on to your sons and your daughters. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede for insight. For if you keep seeking it, like a man would seek for sterling silver, searching in hidden places for cherished treasure, then you will discover the fear of the Lord and find the true knowledge of God. That's the key right there. We're going to talk about that again here in a bit. But wisdom is a gift from a generous God, and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. For the Lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly lovers. I just love the way that's written in the Passion Translation. He becomes your personal bodyguard as you follow his ways, protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just and proper and fair and be empowered to make the right decisions as you walk into your destiny. When wisdom wins your heart and revelation breaks in, true pleasure enters your soul. If you choose to follow good counsel, divine design will watch over you and understanding will protect you from making poor choices. It will rescue you from evil in disguise and from those who speak duplicities, for they have left the highway of holiness and walk in the ways of darkness. They take pleasure when evil prospers and thoroughly enjoy a lifestyle of sin, but they're walking on a path to nowhere, wandering away into deeper deception. And that's um, Proverbs 2 in the Passion Translation. I read through uh, verse 15 and the rest of the chapter is awesome as well, but it talks about having wisdom will protect you in relationships with with men and with women who uh, aren't trying to go down the same path as you are because you are seeking wisdom. But I love how this starts out with the question. The question is, will you receive my words? That's his infallible written word of scripture. But anytime, really, his word is anytime Holy Spirit speaks to you. That's those Holy Spirit unctions. God speaks to us in many, many ways. He's still speaking today. He's still working today. He speaks through his word. He also speaks through Holy Spirit. When he speaks to you, will you, will you receive it? But also, will you honor and treasure it? That, that's the question. Will you treasure his word? Not kind of treating it as something common, but as something that has exceedingly great value. So when God speaks, how well will I receive? How well do I honor what he's saying? And you know, what I have found is the more that I honor and the more that I treat what he says is holy, really the more that I hear from him and the more clearly that I hear from him. If we, we just read uh, verse two, it says, train your heart to listen when I speak. It's getting to know the sound of his voice. Yeah, we've got three kids. And if you and I were out and about, and we were away from our kids, and I got a phone call from them, I could immediately, as soon as they said, hey, daddy, I could know which of the three was on the other end. But if you hadn't spent much time with them, or if, if you didn't really know them, you'd have a difficult time understanding who was on the other end. You'd have a hard time discerning who it was that you were speaking to. It's training our ears and our eyes and our heart to understand when he speaks. You know, we've got five physical senses. We also have five spiritual senses that he can speak to us with. And uh, he speaks in many ways. I was recently 
uh, reading in Exodus 3, and uh, something caught my attention. I thought it was kind of interesting. Exodus 3 it talks about where Moses, he's, uh, he's got a sheep on the backside of the wilderness, and you know the story, the burning bush story. So he's on the backside, he's got a sheep, and he sees this bush burning. It says that Moses was in the wilderness with the flock, with his flock, and he noticed the bush was on fire, but it didn't burn up. So Mo Moses, he was like, hmm, it's kind of interesting. Let me go over there and check that out. And then this is what scripture said. It says, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from the bush. Something interesting caught Moses' attention, and he gave his attention to it. Then that's when God spoke. We train our heart to listen by when we get that, you know, that unction, that, hmm, that's interesting. We start to engage in a conversation to give our attention and listen. When I read a scripture or a word or in a, a certain verse and that just something like something about it jumps out to me. That's an invitation. That's where it's seek out like treasure. When we tune our hearts and we ask, Holy Spirit, is there something you're trying to tell me right here? Is there something you're trying to say right here? And it happens countless other ways as well. We just read in verse three, it says to call out for insight and wisdom. In James, it says that if anyone, if anyone lacks wisdom, then all you got to do is ask. <laughs> we read all those scriptures and it comes to this hinge point, this culmination, it says of seeking wisdom for treasuring his word, for treasure hunting, understanding insight and discernment. Well, it's the understanding of the fear of the Lord and finding knowledge of God. That's the culmination right there is the fear of the Lord and knowledge of the Lord and understanding that fear of the Lord. It, it isn't that I tremble and shake in my boots, right? You don't do that. I mean, you, you only do that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But if I'm in Christ, it's not fearing the Lord shaking in my boots. It is an awe and a reverence, a reverential worship of the very one who spoke. And when he spoke, creation burst onto the scene. The one who marked off the dimensions of the earth and set its set its uh, foot plates, right? And set its footings. The one who told the seas how far they could go and said, hey, right here, this is all you got. You can't go any further, right? The one, the very one who tells the waves when to halt. The one who tells the sun when to rise and when to set. The very one who created you on purpose and above all else desires a personal and intimate relationship with you. If you look in Job, it says that he has a storehouse of snow and hail, and he knows how to dis disperse the lightning. And I don't know about y'all, that's some amazing stuff right there, right? So we're talking about the fear of the Lord. He's all great, almighty, all powerful. He's also all loving. The opposite of the fear of God is the fear of man. See, when we don't fear God, we fear man. We fear the opinions of what somebody else is going to say. We fear the opinions of what somebody else thinks instead of what God thinks. We, we tend to act and do and behave based off of what we think other people may say, what they're going to think about what we do, or it's stuff like that. We do that in response instead of acting and doing what God says. When we fear man, we live for the praise and recognition of man. I like what Bill Johnson says right here. He says, if I don't live for the praise of man, hey, I won't die by their criticism. It's inclining our heart to hear his voice. It helps us to gain knowledge of God. This knowledge that he's talking about in Proverbs right here, it is an intimate knowing. It is a knowing of God. It's not just knowing about God or I've heard of God. It's truly knowing him, knowing his ways. It's understanding what he did, his heart behind it, and what he desires to do today, right? What he's doing today is knowing his ways, I love the psalm that says uh, Moses knew God's ways. The children of Israel knew his deeds. Moses knew his heart. The children of Israel saw what he was doing. They saw the acts. Moses knew why. And I love that, right? I love that. It's the same day. I can read his word. I can memorize every single verse of scripture in the Bible. I can memorize it all. And I can have this head full of knowledge and this head full of facts. But it's when I encounter and I interact and I engage with the author that I gain a heart of understanding and a healthy fear of the Lord. I get to know the creator of all things. 
I want to share this one last thought right here with you. Okay. This is a, um, these are lyrics from a song from Hillsong United. It's called So Will I. So the question, we started with the question, will you treasure my wisdom? That's, that's what Proverbs 2 started with. And the answer is, I will. I will. So here's the lyrics of the song by Hillsong United called So Will I. So God of creation there at the very start. Before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and flashed and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, as he speaks, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form and the stars were made to worship. If they were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you made every burning star, a signal of fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you do not speak in vain. No syllable, empty word, or void. For once you have spoken, all of nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart and everything you say, every painted sky, canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all your praises or all of our praises, if the sum of all of our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. And the last verse is the good one. God of salvation, you chase down my heart. Through all of my failures and pride, on a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, come on, a hundred billion failures disappear. <laughs> Where you lost your life, so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind, come on, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done, every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart. Eight billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Come on. Like you would again, a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Hey, that is some good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed uh, Morning Wisdom. Hope it's added value to you. If it has, make sure to comment below, like, and subscribe, and look forward to seeing you guys on the next Morning Wisdom. You guys have a great day, and God bless.